Hey, 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 ladies and gentlemen, this is Luminous doing a podcast for you guys. I don't usually do podcasts, but when I do, it's probably the most interesting podcast in the world. Yeah. All right, so, no, real fast, I don't usually do podcasts, but uh, the TI2 just ended. Not many tournaments are starting to kick back up, so there's not too many official matches for me to cast. So this is kind of going back to basics. For myself, as a caster, I haven't casted for about a week, so I'm getting somewhat rusty. And perhaps for some of the viewers at home who, I mean, they're kind of getting tired of watching high-level pro games. So we're going back to some of the a pub-level game. Now, I did the future search on Dota 2. This is supposedly, quote-unquote, very high skill level. Level. I don't know exactly what that means. I play in the very high skill level and knowing myself I'm not the best players So I can't really expect the you know the top-notch, you know IG plays uh, From from a game like this, but with that said, you know, let's just give the players a benefit of doubt So what I'm gonna be mostly talking about is skill build item builds and decision choices within the entire game So that's that sounds like very very simple thing and, and to be honest, it's it's very very basic, but it goes a long way when you do always have the correct skill build when you make the correct item choices So this is perhaps a little bit better for beginner players But even as a player that's been playing for a long time you could benefit from uh, I suppose watching this particular video So let's check out the mid lane real fast. It's infatuate playing a Marana against a mr. Shrew Shrew on the pudge so a couple of things to talk about here. You can see Marana has one Lep a level one or Leap a level one, Star Storm a level two. He's gonna get Star Storm at three, imagine as well, and then go back to a four point arrow. If you're going for a solo build, a solo mid build perhaps, I, I like this build pretty much because it does give you quite a bit of nuking power, push the lane a little bit to grab those runes, or at least contest for those runes a little bit early. A Marana, not the best AoE hero, and this build, this particular build, the one taking arrow level four, gives you the most AoE as possible. But if you're going for a side lane build, you generally want to skill level uh, two uh, arrow because if you wait to level 4 arrow, you're probably missing a lot of kill opportunities There are a lot of times where the creep wave just dies and you can shoot arrow and they're tanking the arrow and the entire creep wave So there's a dog outside. So if he keeps working, I will go cook it and then close my window uh, But yes, if you're on the mid- oh god one second guys that is ours. <laughs> All right, so if you're going on the mid lane though, it's uh, you know the AOE is a little bit more important uh, and also, if you're on the side lane, you have a little bit more setup stuns for you. Um, you know, Venture Spirit, Crystal Maiden, so you can land your arrows a little bit easier. So a couple of things to talk about on the bot lane. I, I gotta jump really back and forth. If he got Cycling Dagger right at level 1 and Blink Strike at 2, that right there was a, a kill on Flaw, playing the Rubik. Uh, really, you do want to hit, uh, you do want to take a Cycling Dagger almost always whenever you can. The reason being so, uh, I just talked about the killing opportunity that you get with Stifling Dagger. It is insane as a range, and it grants you 50% slow. If you want to think about some of the best slows in the game, it's not Crystal Maiden Nova. Uh, Enchantress slow at early levels is not that strong. It's the Venomous scale at 50% slow, and guess exactly what it is. It's a 50% slow. Now, the duration isn't too high on the early get goals of the game. You can see it's 1, 2, 3, 4. But at level 2, and, and really at level 3, that's when it's one of the most game breaking slow for three seconds has such a low cooldown you're probably gonna get two off in a single chase and also the reason you want to get a slow not only for a hero killing opportunity it's your farming technique against two 600 range hero you gotta get the stifling dagger at level one it does only 50 damage to creeps which is not that high especially with the traveling projectile it is somewhat difficult to last it but at level two with 100 damage you are practically last hitting every single creep now you do have to adjust your item build a little bit to it because uh, you want to get at least one single clarity or perhaps a ring of uh, protection to upgrade it to a ring of say this a little bit on later on but with that said it's probably one of your i mean this is what makes pa one of the better uh, laning carries there is simply because of stifling stifling dagger is so damn strong and the fact that he's taking a level three is a, a uh well, it's a, a blasphemous. Blasphemous is the, the word I'm looking for. You gotta take it as early as possible. Back in the mid lane here, Mr. Shuv is uh, got a double ring of regen build. I think he started, yeah, I'm pretty sure he started with one of them and then he got the chicken to deliver the other one. So you don't see this build too often in the mid lane and, and for the reason that because it's not too good. And here's the reason why it isn't too good. Now, 
if you start Ring of Regen right from the get-go, that's 350 gold. 350 gold, that gives you plus 2 HP regen per second. If you really want HP regen per second, get a pair of Tangles. A Tangle gives you 7.3 regen per second. Now, with that said, the Tangle doesn't upgrade into anything like a hood that he's trying to build or a headdress later on. And a Tangle doesn't last forever. But Tango only costs 90 gold. This 350 investment really, really slows down uh, your, your quick bottle if you are going for the quick bottle. Seems like Mr. Shuv is not going for the quick bottle, which, I mean, again, a very, very awkward build because Pudge, one of the more mana dependent hero, he really need a large enough mana pool for hooks, multiple hooks, as well as dismember. And of course, the bottle gives you burst regeneration in the HP department, which he definitely needs because he's going to be rotting and taking a lot of damage. So the fact that he's going for a hood rush isn't the worst of idea, I have to say, but it's uh, it's something that you don't see Dendi do. And hey, I mean, that's reason enough, at least for me. There's just so much reason why putting the 700 gold investment for 4 HP regen uh, per second, it's just very, very much so inferior to a bottle first or even a, boot, uh, a quick boost of speed if you want to go for a little bit more offensive raw chasing kill. So meanwhile, we do see Lycan in the jungle. And if you look at his item build right now, and he is trying to run away from a gank, and he is going to be able to get off. So that's pretty good. Yeah, he's, he started with a Ring of Besaidus, I imagine, and then a Sage's Mask. Now, there's very, very little few ways to mess up a Lycan jungle, and this is one of the ways. you got to start out with the uh, Quelling Blade. Quelling Blade, Ring of Protection, plus, you know, Clarity, South, GG Branch, whatever uh, regeneration that suits your fancy, that is the fastest way to start your jungle. You want to go into a Quelling Blade, into a Pesadis, and then back into a Medallion Courage. I do like the Medallion Courage simply because it is, um, after after the Pesadis and the Quelling Blade, this is the fastest way to extend your jungling pattern. Um, because you are using that minus 6 armor, you know, against the neutral creeps whenever you can. Now you might be asking, well, I, I see a lot of players go Vlad's rush. Why do you actually don't finish a Vlad's and go Medallion Courage instead? Vlad's is really nice if you want to plan to come out of jungle and start pushing towers or, you know, basically that's it. If you want to come out of jungle and, and push towers. Now, it's very, very decent if you rush into the Roshan pit and use a, a Vlad's regeneration and go on the Rosh as well. But even if you try to do that, it takes you forever because you don't have enough damage output. It basically takes you forever to, to actually kill the Roshan. Uh, with Medallion, it, it kind of is a different story. We're going to see a very, very nice gank here from Effatuate. And uh, this this Viper is pretty much dead. Arrow's not being used yet. Die nice arrow here against Flaw. And that's going to be a kill. Oh, oh, Magic Wand up here. Are they going to get this one? Stifling Dagger leaping for the last. They're taking a little bit of extra hits, but no big deal. He's got a haste. He can go back to the mid lane instantly. So now Pudge, he wants to roam, but unfortunately he doesn't even have the bottle, but he is going to come up right now. It's going to be a uh, Marana. I think Marana's running right back. So Pudge, despite not having bottle, I like the fact that he is ganking. And Mr. Grayfo, uh-oh, his life is going to be... Very, very great when he gets... Ooh, that's a miss. Is he going to go straight for it? He does have this member. He's going to use it right now. Not sure if that's going to be enough to get the kill. He's going to try. Grateful pops the nuke. Not going to get it. Stifling Dagger. Perhaps he could have actually went in it with Blink Strike and go for the kill. Uh, but Rubik was nearby and Viper was coming in. Don't underestimate a killing potential from Phantom Assassin. I missed a kill up top. Well, are we going to watch that one? We're not going to watch that one. Sorry. Uh, but yeah, don't don't underestimate the killing potential of Phantom Assassin, especially with a hero like this. Sifling Dagger plus Ice Vortex will set in the Kofi for sure. This lane could be getting a lot more kills. I'm not too sure why they're not going for it. Perhaps it's the fact that they're up to against two 600 range hero and they're getting constantly harassed. I, I just feel that you should not, if you're playing PA, don't underestimate your ability, and when you're playing against a PA, don't let, don't underestimate either. You should try your best to harass, but do know the fact that a 50% slow could come in from afar, and you could be basically dead uh, with any kind of setup stuns, any kind of setup disables and whatnot. So that's pretty much what's happening on the bot lane. Haven't been paying too much attention on the top lane, but it was a uh, Treant Protector plus Sang King dueling on the Radiant side. Very, very awkward. Uh, but very similarly, it's a Queen of Pain and what is that? It's just a Queen of Pain solo because Lycan's in the jungle. And Queen of Pain somehow died early, I imagine. No, no ultimate was used. So I had no idea how he died. Maybe he's just eating Burrow Strikes for lunch. Uh, that's probably not very healthy for you. But let's examine the item choices as well as skill choices for Tree and Protector. Leech Team Max is the way to go. I'm very, very surprised that you actually put in that extra point into Nature's guys. If you are in somewhat of a defensive lane, 
it's a pretty good idea but uh, you are missing out a lot of aura for your teammates in the early get-go and to be honest I I'm, I'm personally not the biggest fan of nature's guys but I could see uses for it so um, I haven't tested this hero too much so I'll just re uh, leave my uh, comments on that but yes I love the arcane boots build up because this is a fairly mana intensive hero especially if you're putting points into nature's guys I mean the cooldown on overgrowth allows you to cast them you know pretty frequently like every minute or so level 11 i believe and of course leech c you want to cast it many times and oh flaw is basically dead here i imagine he's dead or will or will flaw die first here yeah no it looks like the ancient apparition dies here and now this viper is basically dead arrow's gonna hit uh, and even if the arrow didn't hit the cycling dagger would have chased again uh the pa didn't really showcase her killing potential in, in that particular gank but even if the sanking did not teleport in and perhaps even if mirana didn't hit that arrow they would have got the kill cycling dagger is absolutely no joke uh, back on the top here Queen and Pain trying to go for this uh, tree protector. You can see that, yeah. Just as to say that Nature's Guy is not too useful, it's saving his life right now. Now, with that said, Scream and Pain does hit invisible units, uh, but there's no way he knows where the tree protector is. He's gonna TP out, and this Queen Pain still standing this particular area, thinking that the tree is there. Is he waiting for Scream Mana? And really? Is he gonna. Alright. Meanwhile, I do love what this Lycanthrope is doing. He sees Sanking, which by the way teleported on the bot lane to set up a gank. And uh, Tree was forced out of lane, immediately pulls out here and start pushing this tower. Now with Vlad's, he could have perhaps pushed down the tower given the fact that it does give plus damage uh, to his wolves as well as Zero, you know, allows a uh, give plus armor and secret wave. Could have probably brought down the tower, but still, you know, this speeds up your jungle pattern by so, so much. I pretty much advocate this build and you see pro player going, going for this build quite a bit as well. Very interesting adjustment, or not really adjustment, but interesting choice of skill build. Most of the time you see the wolves being maxed instantly, but he's going for a feral impulse. I don't think it makes absolutely the biggest difference, but the most standard build is maxing wolves by seven and then going back to max feral impulse. But yeah, no big deal. What is the career coming? That is a Vlad's finish. And now with this item, he could go straight into the pit and go for a uh, Roshan kill for literally free. And it's gonna take him basically no time simply because the minus six armor and he will be doing it. And when you, especially when you have so many units, you are gonna kill down Roshan very, very quickly. Now look towards him to find an opportunity to go in. A lot of pub players, they have this and they immediately try to smoke in. Now the smoke of the seed does kind of allow you to walk in there undetected, but uh, player are gonna be watching out for it. Let's remember to start it out and 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 yep nice up here from mr shu so uh, again i mean not the exactly the most pro players in the world but uh seems pretty good seems pretty good looks like there was a oh oh, oh blink strike blink strike blink strike blink strike oh man could have eat i well i won't say easily made it out there but could have made it a little bit closer if he's using blink strike uh to escape that again seeing an engagement happening on the bot lane and in, in immediately noise sense says i will push that tier one tower force out glyph this, this glyph is not going to do anything considering that two heroes dead there's no putty tp in and tier one's going down one of the biggest thing about playing a very push base carry whether you're morphling whether you're anti mage when you have the battle fear uh or when you're playing the lycanthrope you are a great pushing carry you're very very survivable because you have spells like blink waveform as walls shapeshift if you notice action going on elsewhere in the map like right now you can be doing a lot of stuff whether it's pushing tower whether it's walking straight into roshan pit they are not going to deal with you because they, 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 they got to deal with your teammate and because you're pushing down towers because you're killing roshan you are still benefiting your team with ooh, you're benefiting your team with you know plus gold and exp stifling dagger comes in from building range and mr puss is uh, basically dead. Wow, you gotta be very, very careful. Oh, Madoku could really go in right now. The creeps are tanking a tower and... Why are you not going? Dude, I would've jumped in right there, man. Stifling Dagger, Face Boot, as well as Blink Strike. Would've been a relatively a free kill, but to be fair, he didn't know who was there, who was behind the towers. So very dangerous just, but regardless, you know. Again, realizing that PA is such a powerful ganker, Pudge coming around, trying to 1v4, this is going to be awkward. By the way, you can see on the minimap, Lycanthropus is doing his thing. Again, his teammates are distracting, he's going to go for the free Roshan. This tower perhaps even going to survive. No glyph right now, Pudge, 
Oh, you know, he it's an arrow right now. And are they really gonna dive? They're gonna go right in here. Mado going for the big kill. Burrow strike coming in from Flaw. Meanwhile, Pudge tanking the whole team. It's gonna be a PA for a Pudge trade, which I guess works out pretty well here for the uh, Dire side. Are they gonna get a kill? Fable is gonna do the job. Fable, Fable, Fable. No! He had enough for Fable. I think he had the range as well. Nice Ice Blast. And that's gonna force him to shatter. One more right click. So it's gonna be really, really close. Really, really close. No, it's gonna survive. So, a little misplay here and there, but for the most part, pretty decent play. Again, this uh, this uh, like a throw player, fairly impressive. Tier one tower has went down on the top. It's gonna be mech build. Uh, you don't generally see too many mechs in a in a pub game, and seeing the fact that he is going for a mech build is pretty nice. And arcane boots again, so important for a low mana hero like Trian, and uh, it will support that mech as well. A oh, nice harassment. I'm effing Russian noob is really playing like one because he's he's top solo against two melee heroes and unfortunately he's got nothing. Meanwhile, a nature's guy's whiff and let's see how this hook is gonna hit. There's a also a dust. He popped. Oh well, that was awkward. Uh, meanwhile, on the top lane here or on, meanwhile on the bot lane, we see Phantom Assassin going for a kill. Meanwhile, it's gonna be a swing around this ward, completely scouting everything out. Oh, Queen of Pain don't even have mana for Blink. At least he's not close to it yet. And here comes the Sand King. Sand King, that is going to hit. Uh, no Epicenter being channeled. Do they even need it? I don't think so. Any deny attempt. A second Burrow Strike is going to get the kill for sure. Start rotting, start rotting, start rotting. Yeah, Burrow Strike. Yep, that's the Burrow Strike kill. So unfortunate for the lack of denies. Here comes the Lycanthrope. Is he going to really try to 1v3 ultimate? Anybody? There's the ultimate. There's the epicenter being channeled. And Mr. Neunsteins. He's going to come back alive in human form. But the shapeshift bonus will still intact. So you can see him run very, very fast. There you go. He's going to be running away. Trying to go for the kill. Burrow Strike Hour into Sandstorm. He's going to be completely saved. Telekinesis will cancel the stun. Nicely play here. Create a play. And are they going to go for Sanking? Sanking all his spells on cooldown. Burrow Strike is going to be up. Nice. Not gonna have enough time to cast it. Me on Noin Sans not giving a, a balls to anything right now. Oh, but the Ice Blast will get the kill. The Shatter range. It's low. It's low. It's low. And this guy will finally come out. The Shatter is gonna get the kill. He's got he does not have any mana. Here comes Queen of Pain. Blink in here. Scream ultimate. Yep, that's the ultimate. Nice kills. Whole bunch of kills being exchanged back and forth. And the question is, what is Mr. Butcher doing? I think he was seen by this observer war, so Marana should be somewhat careful. Now, in this game, I would not be looking at things like, oh, let's look at how everybody's CSing. I won't be looking at, like, gold chart and, I, you know, experience chart. Because if you're playing in an actual game, you will not have that kind of information. So, we will just basically do the old school, the getaway. Uh, ignore these numbers, please, because you're not supposed to know that. But, hey, on, well, for the most part, Dyer's doing pretty well. Viper's having a little bit of a tough time. But, you know, your punch is doing well. Your Lycanthrope is doing well, and critically, your Queen of Pain is doing decent. She's doing decent. Earlier, I was not too impressive. Uh, impressed, sorry, with, with her performance. Oh, that's going to be a decent hook. That hook hits, and uh, pretty much dead. Uh, Noinstein just pops his ultimate. And they have a ward seeing uh, Mr. Treant Protector as well. Again, Noinstein, because he's a Lycanthrope, because he's got Vlads, and he's freaking level 12 already, he could be pushing like an absolute beast, and you could see him doing exactly just that. There is ultimate coming off cooldown, and again, this is one of the benefits of playing Treant Protector. Unlike Enigma, unlike a Ravage, you can use it very, very frequently. The Ice Blast is going to whiff, and because whiff, oh, oh, yo, 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 you got to be somewhat careful. Telekinesis, a Blink Stripe being slow, and the ultimate gets popped on here. He's really going to go for a kill any dust to really detect I, I knew Pudge previously had one this guy's is not he's gonna pop his mech yes you can use items within nature's guys as well as cast spells and will not break invis one of the more unique factors of nature's guys making it one of the more powerful spells in the game but it's running out very soon because it's it's a very low duration of nature's guys I think he'd be recast it Sand King just chilling out does half his epicenter so if they chain this properly epicenter into uh, into overgrowth it could be some legit combo, but not if he gets hooked. Nice quick dismember here. And he does pop his ultimate right now, but again, 
not doing too much there is a dust and viper would just orb walk him to help popping a second duration of that ultimate ice blast will hit on the lichen will he be fine pudge walking around pudge 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 nice hook attempt i'll talk about that in a bit here madio it's gonna try to blink out remembering that he had a blink strike and i do Ooh, grateful it's gonna eat arrow pudge walking right in trying to superman this up does not have the bottle region you can see that he's completely lacking the mana but viper will clean up gets one more kill sees infatuate that's another kill nice dive here from the dire squad and look at this the entire team white gonna put themselves a 10 kill ahead all right a couple of things i want to point out with that what the pudge did first of all didn't have the bottle so really would have missed another hooker opportunity if he did secondly if he saw the pa over there kind of getting rot killed he could have easily hooked the pa because pa was in melee range but instead he went for the hook attempt on ancient aberration Try to make plays like that. If you know an enemy is basically dead for sure because he or she is surrounded by three or four of your friendlies, go for the kills if you're like playing Marana, if you're playing, I don't know, Sankin with a Blink Dagger. Just keep trying to stun guys that are running ahead, trying to help your team to get more kills. Again, the PA is basically dead, so he went for the A. Uh, didn't hit the hook ultimately, but it's plays like those that get you a couple extra kills in the team fight and ultimately makes a pretty big difference. I'll let you guys enjoy that plane flying over by. Now, we're up to 3,500 go here on Neunsteins. Now, there's two very, very standard builds here for Lycanthrope. You could go for the Necro 3 build or you could go for a Black King Bar. Uh, Necro 3 and Black King Bar as a comparison. I'll talk about that later as we have a Viper going to be dead and this PA doing some big, big work. Now, BKB and Necro 3. Uh, both has very very powerful uses. Why are you blinking immediately barrel strike? Is it gonna be arrow follow-up arrow? Yep, that's gonna hit Mandigo. It's gonna get a kill I love the fact that PA is playing very very aggressive during the mid game Oh, uh, well not when she gets hooked like that dismember That's gonna do it for the PA very very nicely play on both a nice blink strike Oh nice mech up here ice blast gonna hit Nicely play on the Radiant, there's gonna be an Overgrowth, that's one kill, and this Lycan Throw, gotta be careful, cause you could Burrow Strike, no Burrow Strike, no Burrow Strike, Burrow Strike coming off cooldown, and I do believe Marana should be fine, uh, Necrobook is his item choice, I'll talk about that in, in just a bit, just a whole bunch of action, so real fast, great use of a Blink Strike to use, uh, use it as escape, I love the fact that he's playing ultra aggressive, just really showcasing that He's aggressive. He's a he's a carry that is allowed to be played aggressively, and you could really dominate games because people don't expect PA to be jumping like that to get kills. But let's talk about the Necro three choice on Lycan Throw. Now BKP and Necro three are both good choices. Let's examine one one at a time and how see how it fits uh, against this lineup. Now BKP would block a lot of mag magical damage like the epicenter, like the you know Burrow Shrike as well as the A blast and a part of Marana's magical damage, but. Uh, it will be, uh, the BKB immunity does not block the overgrowth. You can BKB out of overgrowth if you're trapped by it, but even if you're magically immune, overgrowth will still hit you, so that's kind of one strike against it. The PA, you know, the physical damage, that's a second strike against it. Uh, he's opting for the uh, Necro 3, which is not a bad choice, given the fact that you, do, you are dealing with two invisible heroes, so the detection is nice. But the fact that you're also dealing with Epicenter and Overgrowth, that's a lot of AoE damage. And anytime that they kill the blue Necro minion, the, the last will, uh, the, the kind of the passive ability on the blue Necro minion, will do 6 hundred uh pure damage which is absolutely insane considering that hey this guy's got you know 1200 that's like half your hp pool this guy's got a thousand that's 60 percent of your hp pool like if you get a quick necro three like if you finish in 25 minutes it's absolutely insane it's absolutely insane so i really like that choice meanwhile pa is going for some crazy item choice start out with the ogre club which if it's a bkb rush not too bad considering that well uh, in in most games bkb rush wouldn't be too bad uh, the more popular choice here. Ooh, nice hook. Did they have detection? There's, there was a dust. Didn't really use it. And is he going to pop his overgrowth? That's a question. No, no, no. Thinks better of it. All right. Well, God, man. These guys are just having too much action everywhere. All right. So if you want to go for a BKB rush, that's okay. But he's going for a Ogre Club into a Belt of Giant Strength. And seeing this alone makes me want to think he's going for Basher and the Javelin just confirms it. So a couple of things about this build. If you want to go for a BKB rush, most likely it's not really worth it simply because you're not doing enough damage. It's going to help you survive. Let's be fair here. It's going to help you survive, but you're not really doing enough damage to warn the fact of magical immunity. A lot of players like to go for a Battle Fury build simply because it gives you a lot of uh, farming capability. And to be honest, since your Coupe de Grasse, your ultimate, or Cup of Grace, I love to say it, 
since you're critting damage, you want plus damage. So the phase boost is really nice, but the Battle Fury plus 60 really uh, kind of takes your Coupe de Grasse up to the next level. And without that, his, his crits are at 400, which is completely respectable, but it's not game breaking. So, uh, you know, a very popular build is phase boost into a Battle Fury back into the BKB. Now, let's talk about the Basher. Basher is a very, very decent item choice if you have enough attack speed to work with it. Now, to be fair, Blink Strike does give you some attack speed uh, bonus during the duration of that Blink Strike, but to be honest, it's not enough. It's really not enough to at least justify for the Basher build. Um, if there's a lot of BKBs on the enemy side, Basher is a very, very powerful late game item choice for the Phantom Assassin. When you're critting for a billion, when you're basically killing everybody and they're trying to run away, the Basher for the fact that it goes through magical immunity, it just stuns you. It's pretty insane. But this early in the game, not only does she not have enough survivability to take advantage of it, she doesn't really have enough attack speed to take advantage of it. So I feel like it's a very, very poor first item choice like she, she's going for right now. But ultimately, it's a very, very powerful late game item choice. So the order is a little bit messed up. Uh, but I think he has a very, very decent idea. Meanwhile, Mr. Neuenstein sees there is a big cluster F on the bot lane. Sees no one on top. Pops his wolf. Pops his necro book. This is one of the other uses of necro book. Really insane pushing because, well, necro book gets benefit from Feral Impulse as well as your uh, how. So you're getting your team a lot of plus damage. And meanwhile, Luminous misses a team fight. Do we really need to watch that team fight? The overgrowth epicenter did not really mess, uh, did not really fire off. Queen of Pain blinks right in. There's a dust, but the blaster comes in here. The blink strike, he's going for the kill. Meanwhile, I'm effing Russian noob gets uh, killed. And again, PA doing so much work. So basically a trade in the jungle. I think it was a three for three. Rove Trillin, uh, or Treant Protector die here. And meanwhile, again, if you see someone, you could kill them simply because of the power of the uh, Siphling Dagger. Keep chasing, keep chasing. There you go, leap in for the MS bonus. And all they need is another Stifling Dagger. If you see them, if you see them, Stifling Dagger, Face Boots, easy kills. Basher doing some job. Crit for 500, which is fairly respectable. Again, the reason why she lays so well, the reason why she's a powerful ganker, at least in my opinion, is the fact that Stifling Dagger is very, very low in cooldown, uh, very low in mana cost, and you could spam like at least five or six of them in a single team fight, and you could use it to farm. Yeah, it's it's just a very, very beautiful skill. All right, quickly, let's do a item check. Blink Dagger up yet? Yes, it just got finished. Uh, and he's level 11, or past level 11. And that's going to mean that there's going to be quite a bit of AoE. Of course, Roof Trillin is going to be your initiator. He could walk. I keep calling him Roof Trillin because that's his name in Dota 1. But Tree and Protector, his name is in Dota 2. Yeah, he basically walk in with a Nature's Guys and just drop the ult. And of course, that's going to set up Sign King. A lot of magical damage. So it's going to be some pressure for that Pudge to upgrade his pipe instantly. He does have enough to upgrade to the pipe. I don't know why he hasn't done it yet. Uh, he, he's not really going for an item like an urn. He's not going for an item like a four staff. Maybe that's what he's waiting for. Is he going for a Buja Travel? I'm not too sure, but their team needs a pipe right about now. And uh, he should be... Ooh, nice ward here scoping that one out. Not going to get the kill. But again, I love what the Dire team is doing right now. Do they have a gem? Yes, they do on Queen of Pain. Ooh, uh-oh. Uh-oh, Hook coming off cooldown. Hooking back. Nicely done. And Burrow Strike, that's going to miss Roshan dead. This is time here for Neuenstein to lead his team. Uh, there's a gem, and he is uh, basically dead. A Ancient Apparition, Ice Blast comes in right now. Infatuate. How did he get there? Oh, he left in there, and that's going to be it. Mr. Pudge looking for some hook. Mr. Pudge looking for some hook. He sees him. He sees him. Any four staff forward? No four staffs. Uh-oh. Oh. And he should be okay. Okay, so the team needs a pipe. He just bought something, and it's a Butcher Travel. Not too sure why you need Butcher Travel. Butcher Travel is very, very good when the towers are still up, and you really need, need to get around the map and go for the ganks. Uh, but we'll talk about that in a bit, because Fall seems like he's basically dying. Matty Odell blinks in, perhaps a little bit too aggressive. Trium was not there to provide the AoE support. I have no idea where the hell Trium was, but really needed to be there to provide the mech. We got mech him up, mech him up! No mech needed so far, because again, Overgrowth is going to keep him in place, but there's just not enough damage output. Ancient Apparition Ice Blast comes in right now. That is going to whiff on everybody. Did he use his mech? He did not use his mech throughout the entire team fight. Granted that nobody was really in trouble. Except A, who was limping away. But really, there's a lot of pressure here on this stream protector to be right there in the beginning of the team fight, uh, because he's providing a lot of support 
through that overgrowth, through the nature skies, through the AoE heal of Leech Seed, and most importantly through the mecha, not only does it heal 250, it does provide you critically plus 5 armor against very very physically dependent damage hero. Don't don't forget Viper is kind of OP when it comes to physical damage as well, especially when you're low HP, uh, you are taking big nether, nether toxin damage. What, what's going on mid lane here? Bro Strike, that's gonna hit. Uh, and, and, Noinstein's nice hook back here. Not too sure who was he aimed for, but ultimately worked out very decently. Ice Blast, that is gonna miss on both these guys. And, you know, Bro Strike, that's gonna miss. Fable, bouncing around. A lot of chasing back and forth, and not too much killing. And, uh, with that said, both teams is backing off. Roshan is gonna be back. Ooh, is that a second Roshan? Man, Noise Science is just on top of things, taking Aegis one after another, uh, go pushing, and meanwhile though, there's gonna be a hook, there's gonna be Dismember, the gem is still right there, arrow's gonna hit, and Overgrowth, use your mech, use your mech, he finally mech'd up, that was close, and now with a setup here with the Epicenter, that's too dead, and now, meanwhile, Mr. Shuv actually blocking the Lycan throw, Moonlight Shadow gets cast, they still have that gem, so, uh oh, nice tonight here, do they have a gem? No, they don't. Queen of Pain has already dead, but Necro 3 is in position. Oh, he's trying to 1v18, and Mr. Noinsize, you're not that strong. Bash is going to pwn you, that Ancient Apparition Ice Blast. Boom, the finished kill. But Matteo is going to die to the Necro Books as well as the Viper Illusion. They're going to surround on Noinsize, and he is dead. He, well, well, well. Um, yeah, uh, uh. I'm just madly confused why he didn't keep chasing with the Burrow Strike and why Mr. Noin signs walk right back in. Oh, maybe that's why, cause he yeah, don't 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 walk back in like that. Oh, oh! Big blink in here. Oh guys! Dyer's top tower is under attack. I mean, you know, play makes mistakes from time to time, it's gonna port out just fine. All right, so a couple of things. Uh, one, one very, very snipes. <laughs> he did not sidestep. He snaps, play like a nab, and and miss a bro. Um, a couple of things. If you're basically in, in that situation, like over here, if you're chasing with Sanking, and uh, you basically just want the cooldown of your bro strike, just walk next to him. Don't even right click the like. And guess what? You right click for 85. He was at freaking 30 percent health. You're not gonna bring him down with a single right click. Uh, and, and because you do a single right click, he'll just run the hell away from you, right? So just keep running along him. Gallop alongside, he's got four legs, you got freaking eight! Your scorpion, is that eight? Well, he only used six of them, but he's got eight legs! Just walk next to him, just wait for your burrow strike cooldown, and of course you can have to blink die to keep chasing as well. Just walk right next to them and, and yeah, just wait for the cooldown. Don't need to attack, because that attack is not going to do too much. Alright, so the question is, who dropped a gem? I'm going to quickly take a sneak peek. Alright, Radiant's got the gem. Which normally means a freaking big deal in a pro game because you could go massively D ward, you could grab map control, but this is a pub game and there's one ward here and nobody. Why? Okay, real fast, Mr. Flaw. I gotta say, why do you actually ward here? Because if we pause the game, just pause the game right now, one has action actually ever happened here. Has it actually ever happened here? Sure, there was just a little bit of chasing earlier where, where apparently Mr. Lycan sidestep like a pro. Um, but really, is there any action happening here? No. So there's no need to ward there. Now, to be fair, I have perfect vision. But even if you're playing game, it, like something like over here where the punch actually got sight of our previous hook, that would have been perfect. Or if you put it over here, that would have been great. Over here, not so much. Um, Lycan, you gotta, you gotta be careful. Overgrowth, and they gotta hit this arrow. Stifling Dagger, it's not gonna do anything because he's gonna pop his ultimate. Oh, he, yeah, the arrow did hit, but... Not enough physical damage output. The bash not proccing, so somewhat unfortunate. Not too sure why he did not blink down and burrow strike punch. Looking for the hooks, looking for the hooks, looking for the hooks, looking for the hooks. All right, here we go. Ooh, nice, nice attempt. Not gonna get that off. So butcher travel into a blade mail. Now blade mail is very, very nice because you are gonna redirect a lot of sand king's damage. But what's better than redirecting sand king's damage? Providing your entire team with 400. Uh, 400 kind of a, a, a HP shield against the epicenter. So I cannot get behind on Mr. Pudge's item choice. The fact that he started with the ring region into a hood and did not finish the pipe. If he's like, oh man, we need a pipe for the team. Let's rush it. Then I could kind of get behind it, uh, but not really. And here we go, Infatu. Oh, epicenter, epicenter, no epicenter. He blinked in. He tries to channel, which is not that good of a choice. Walks in into a well, the PA's doing some big work. PA's doing some big work, but. Uh oh, 
If you're trying to run from PA, you're you're doing something wrong. You gotta actually burst her down. Arrow's gonna hit. PAQ is actually just stifling dagger all day long from backline. A little bit of fray. Nice toss here. Gonna uh, basically uh, allow everybody to run away. Viper is trying to orb walk. I like the idea, but my friend, you, you're in a little bit of trouble. And Flaw says, I, I'm, I'm gone, guys. Yeah, and uh, this Viper, he has a Manta, he has a Vanguard, he's so damn tanky. Anybody come in right now, Telekinesis, give him another Telekinesis, stun for him. No, no, yeah, they don't need to do anything. And, you gotta watch this arrow. Best arrow of all time. Nice arrow. Oh, oh, yeah, no. Oh, Viper, that's the wrong way, man. It's gonna TP out, there's no more stun. Overgrowth, overgrowth! <gasps> Too excited. Too excited watching great play from these players. Again, if you're watching at home, if you're watching at home, you know, you know what I've noticed? When I jump into pro player stream, when I cast a pro game, and I see very, very poisonous comments. Even on YouTube, I, I think my viewers are generally a lot better than most of the other viewers. Uh, man, sometimes you go in, into like a caster stream, and, and people are just... They're they're just mad. Uh, like a lot of times, they have very very poisonous comment. Like they uh, snaps miss the burrow strike, and then apparently he's the worst player of all time. Blah blah blah. And uh, there's a one man ultimate, which apparently that's that's okay ultimate. Uh, you could, by the way, always use one man ultimates mostly at any stage of the game because stream protectors the cooldown it's it's quick. It's very very quick. Uh, you know, 195 seconds is still fairly long, but. Given the fact that it's a pro game, you could always turtle long enough for your next ultimate to be online. But let's go back to my point, right? I feel like the community a lot of times is very poisonous. Like, man, he missed a burrow strike. That's fine. We're humans. Have you never ever missed a burrow strike in your life? Have you never ever misplayed? But if somebody misplay, apparently that invites comments to be like, oh man, he's so bad. Blah blah blah. Why we're watching this, guys? We're all human. We're human. It's okay. It's okay. We all made mistakes. Some more than others. But yeah. Anyways, I have no idea what the hell I was previously talking about. So when you don't know what to say, uh, a cast some some caster advice to to uh, new casters out there. When you don't know what to say, just just talk about items. All right, let's do a quick item check. Uh, Queen of Pain does not have the does not have the Bloodstone finish. Now a, a pro generally in a pretty good game with the Queen of Pain will have a Bloodstone finish in 18 minutes. We're slightly double that now. Apparently this guy is not a pro, which is completely fine. Um, he doesn't have the best creep score as well as the hero kill score and understandably so right we don't all play pro uh, but this is somewhat late and when you when you actually finish a bloodstone so late you do miss out on a lot of charges now with that said take that into account if you know you're not the best farmer on a queen of pain or like storm street if you want to buy the bloodstone kind of adjust your build maybe you just want to go for orchid rush maybe just go for a different item you know like if, if you know you're not going to finish that qu quick bloodstone you are actually missing a lot of the benefits from it now to be fair it does give you a lot of uh, damage i'm uh, sorry it does give you a lot of hp and mp as well as hp mp regen and and great it's it's not a bad item but if you want it for the bloodstone charges to stack up um you know maybe you do consider a different item all right here we go walk in here trying to ultimate do we have any arrow er, scout arrow scout arrow Meanwhile, he fall leaps in, and the saber is gonna leap out. Dude, Mr. Trian could just pop out here with the biggest ultimate life. Blink Burrow Strike, that's gonna hit on one ultimate. That's on two, but the hook comes in right now. That's a sniper hook, because they cancel the channel, and they're gonna get the kill. Nicely done. Maybe that's why it's not getting a pipe, because hey, the channel, the ultimate's not gonna get channel. Uh oh, Mr. Pudge down to half HP, but this Lycan throw doing big right click work. He's got Necro 3. Nice blink out here from Matteo. He's gonna come back out here. Me, me, Trian. They're trying to TP out. Oh, crits, crit, crits. Wow. That was some sick TP. That was some sick TP. It was just like 10th of a second too late. He was basically dead. But these guys have won a team fight. Mostly because the Sanking could not get off his ultimate. Really, I think to be honest, Strink should be initiating very, very bravely. He should not allow the Sanking to initiate. Because if Sanking is blinking like that, he is going to get his ultimate cancel. But if Treant initiates, and even if he dies, Sand King's gonna get off a huge ultimate against a pipeless team, I might add. You're gonna F them up. So, I, this is Treant's gotta play a little bit ball steep. He, he's, he's got 1700 HP, he's got a mech effectively sitting at 2300 or something. He, he's gonna man up. Oh, uh, he, he does see his team, you know, he does see his enemies right there. So that's pretty cool. Uh, but yeah, this guy's gotta man up. 
All right, so I, I cook one dog, and now the other dog from my neighbor comes out. So let me go cook that one, too. Man, with all these dogs being cooked, my room is, like, really, really hot. And casting this game is also making me hot and heavy, so. All right, let's go back to the item check. Um... Reaver, yeah, Reaver, uh, the kind of the next step up here from Lycanthrope. A lot of players, even if they're going for Necro 3, they would like to go back for a BKB because it's really kind of the one two item you want to go for. Uh, the order might adjust a little bit differently, uh, but instead he's like, you know what, F the BKB. I'm still going to get stunned, I'm still going to get bashed, and I'm still going to get right click down by the Marana. Let's just go for more HP. The blink, burrow strike, the arrow. Epi wow, man, they're going they're going all the way to town for Noinstein's. Noinstein's got... Cheese, cheese, yeah, he's gonna use it right now. Pop the ultimate and run away. And this is time to take the fight. There's no more ultimate, guys. There's no more ultimate. Go, go, nice ultimate. Blink out here. Did not dodge the ultimate. Ice Blast gonna come in. That's gonna hit on everybody. How's the chasing power? Oh, man. It's like everybody popping their ultimate. Nobody gets anything done. And that means it's enough time for that Sanking ultimate as well as the Tree ultimate cooldown. Or will it be if they charge him right now and ride this Creep Wave, they could actually get the bot Rax. 86 seconds, 60 seconds, Pudge looking for the hook, oh, that's gonna hit on Aiden, nice hook smear, Mr. Shu, the item choices are not too good, but, you know, hey, nice stealing on the Burrow Strike, going right in, F oh, that's nice, Matteo on the run, oh, he's not gonna run, Am. oh, 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 nice blink strike, but Viper's gonna pick up the kill here, and Noise Science is, he's going to town by himself, he's keeping away the entire team, and this is really where Lycan shines, Raxing, cute glyph, they use everything on me and I survive. Yeah, that's kind of the story of that team fight. Viper slow, uh, Manta not debuffing it, of course, and that's gonna be another kill. Teleportation coming in from Buja Travel, Pudge Buyback. Yeah, that's what's good for. That's the Rax, and effectively, that's the game, right? Do I need a? Yeah, that's good a game. So let's let's quickly, you know, pull up a couple of menus. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Effectively, there's a couple there's a, a couple of heroes I really want to talk about. But I didn't have time to. Of course, Viper with his item choice, which is pretty decent, by the way. Flaw with his item choice, pretty decent as well. Uh, Marana with the man style, didn't talk too much about him. Didn't have the time to talk about Ancient Operation. So I felt like I talked about 60% of the heroes, which is, you know, fairly decent. Um, what I took away from this game is how quickly the momentum-based hero got out of control. Noinstein's taking down a couple of towers, giving his entire team some free gold. He takes away a couple of Aegises, again giving his team more gold. Queen of Pain, despite not having the quickest item choice, not having the best creep kills, had very, very quick level 16. And because of that, all these squishies, they didn't have a pipe either, right? And of course, the mech was kind of late on a couple of occasions. That Sonic Wave just, just ate everybody alive. Rubik also stole very, very good spells. I seen things like, I, I saw Lep being used to escape. I saw Burrow Strike being stole repeatedly. Burrow Strike, one of the best spells if you can steal on Rubik because it's both a blink and also AoE nuke that also does damage. That's insane. That's insane. Um, AoE nuke that's also stuns is what I'm trying to say. So, yeah, for the most part, both teams play very, very well. This choice, this item choice uh, from Phantom Assassin, the basher into a, a, a helm back into SNY. So I thought he was going for a BKB, uh, but ultimately he wasn't a BKB. So that's that's not an item choice I could get behind, but for the most part, you know, pretty well play. So uh, last shout out to all the players in the game. And of course, uh, for you guys, let me know if this is uh, something you enjoy, something you learn something from, and uh, give me feedback. I need, I need to improve this one. I right, hope you guys enjoy this and I am Luminous. Thank you guys for watching. Until next time, this is Luminous signing out. See you guys.